What is the perfect snack? <sighs> when I was down in Melbourne, I uh, went to an Italian restaurant and I had a little pillowy, crunchy, crispy, golden, really golden, delicious and cheesy, cr creamy again. Um, what they call croquettes. And what I found out was, it's croquettes made with bechamel basically. And I want to make it as naughty and dirty as possible. Remember that chicken that we broke down? and stripped away its skin and pulled it apart. We're gonna make something absolutely disgustingly good out of this. So, to get started, we're gonna cut this chicken skin as small as we can. Make sure you get a sharp, sharp knife. And all we're gonna do is put this into a pan, a cold pan, and start cooking it on low heat. And what that's gonna do is gonna render out the fat while making the skin crispy. We're not gonna use the skin today. We don't need to. What I want is the fat. Then we're gonna make a thing that's called schmaltz. Schmaltz is made from chicken fat and I'm gonna add in some minced garlic and eschlots with it. And we'll have this amazing flavor of chicken, aroma and garlic and onions. Yum. You can roast this in the oven, but we're gonna make a quick one by putting it in the pan. So in the pan, it goes, and again, cold. Low heat, I'm gonna pop it in the back, and we're gonna come and check to it later on. All right, so while the chicken fat is rendering away, next thing we're gonna start working on is our bechamel. So we're gonna make the roux, and the roux is made with butter. In goes the butter. Now, once the butter is melted, add in your plain flour. About the same amount of the butter that you put in. Let the flour absorb the butter and cook through. So you wanna cook the flour just for a little bit to get rid of the floury taste. So your roux and your bechamel won't be kind of that, you know, a powdery kind of texture as well. Now at this stage, this is where it gets important. You can add in your milk, cold. Little at a time. That's gonna absorb up by the flour. And add it incrementally. The flour starts to swell up and suck in all of that milk. You can use a whisk, you don't have to. I'm using a spatula here and it will still come out extremely smooth. It's not coming out smooth. No. Ah, oh. it's fucked up. Shit. This is going in the bin. I've got to back up. Oh, okay. Pressure's on. Attempt number two. A little bit of milk. Let it be smooth first. And then another one. Let it get smooth again. Oh, it's looking good now. Now it's looking like mashed potato. And then some more. Not too much, a little bit at a time. I think that's where I screwed up. I put too much at once. Oh, there we go. Wee, wee, wee. I don't want to make this to a really saucy bechamel like for a lasagna. I want to make it nice and thick because we're going to need to hand shape it before we fry it. Usually with bechamel croquettes, people would add cheese and ham. I'm going to add chicken fat, garlic, eschalots, and some cheese, parmesan cheese. So that there is my chicken skin. All that fat is what I want. So I'm going to let it sit in the residual heat to render out the rest. Now for the seasoning, I'm gonna add in a whole heap of Parmesan, some salt, and that's it. I'm gonna keep this aside, and then add in the rest of that once I cook the garlic and eschlots in it. Bechamel done. Before we get to that, we're gonna chop up two cloves of garlic, a little bit of eschlot as well. Here's a little trick, by the way. I use the back, only the back of my knife to score my onions. Not much of a hack, really. I'm gonna chop this as fine as possible. For me, that should be enough. And then next, with our garlic. What's really important now is to mince the garlic. So, I'm gonna crush it. My eyes are burning already. 
again. And use the back of your knife, this one here on this side, and start chopping. That's crushing the garlic. Oh, spicy, really spicy. Then you want to flip your knife and then we're going to start chopping it even more. Now it's really important to get as fine as possible for this garlic because it releases all the oils and adds a lot more flavor than you think. All right, so when you get to this point, it's not ready yet. You want to use, I use the flat knife like this, a square one. I just kind of use like a spatula, squish it. That's going to squeeze all that juice out. Then I flip it I go again, put it all back in. Combine it together, squish it, squish it. Go ragey, go nuts. Till you get this really nice minced garlic, like that. But if you're lazy, you can get minced garlic, already minced. Now back to our small pan. Now this, I only want the oil. Just that sexy. Wonderful, delicious oil. Now garlic and eschalot cook different. Garlic burns first and a lot faster. So I'm gonna add the garlic a little bit later on. All I wanna do is gently saute my eschalots first. Because eschalots have more water content than garlic does. Gently saute, you don't want to caramelize the onions. As soon as it gets translucent, then add in the garlic. Now, only gently saute the garlic in until it becomes really nice and fragrant. Why is animal fat so much better? It's ridiculous. I'm only looking for until the garlic begins to caramelize. It's gone to that point where the garlic has kind of fried, become golden, and the onions are still sauteed, translucent. The only golden part is that delicious, fragrant garlic. Not burnt. You go too far, you're gonna burn it. I haven't tasted this yet, by the way. So, seasoning is adamant. Look at that. Ooh, man, you can tell how freaking bad this is for you. Oh, that's what I'm after. Oh. That is so bad for you. Wait, I wanna have a little snack. Dip chicken in this. Oh. That's a fucked up cheese dip. Now this goes in the container and into the fridge to set. And we can start molding it before we fry it. Alrighty friends, I've got a confession to make. I've actually never made this before. So this is my first attempt. I assume that you roll it with a wet, wet hand. Make them nice and moist, they don't stick. I literally just YouTube this like today. And then go to the egg wash. And then I've got some panko prong, panko crumbs to coat these little suckers. Let's pray they work. And voila, I think it should work. I think I'm missing a step here. I'm not sure if I should flour it and then egg it again. I'm gonna give that a go. Let's try another one. Let's try another one. I'll roll this one out. Oh no. This is a mess. This is just chaos cooking right now. Into the flour. And then back into the egg wash? Doesn't look right. Learning with Reynolds 101. I'm learning as I go. And then into the panko. Roll, roll, roll. Nah, I'm pretty sure I'm doing this wrong. But let's, let's find out. Get your oil hot, 180 degrees. Let's give this a hot go. Let's go first. I wanna get these nice and golden. Oh, that's quick. I wish I like lost half the breadcrumb just then. Yeah, that doesn't look right. <laughs> no! Let's try this one. Uh, this one is feeling a lot better, but it's also exploding. I'm seeing the, the vegetable. Ex oh shit, it's exploding everywhere. Oh no. Oh no. I'm not sure that's meant to happen. Oh. Can you Google how it works? <laughs> Flour first. You can tell I'd never deep fry any dishes. I've never deep fried dishes. All right now, these are looking better. They're sounding better. It's not exploding anywhere. Oh, it's still exploding, but. <laughs> See, kids, 
I'm not perfect, but neither are you. I'm gonna try this one last time. One last time. They look like shit. Egg wash, flowers coming off. Why? Panker crumb. All right, fingers crossed everyone. Fingers fucking crossed. I'm pretty sure that exploded again. I think. Oh no. It's holding out, it's holding out, it's holding out, it's holding out. There you have it, that's my croquette. My delicious cheese and parmesan, my parmesan cheese croquette with Paco Crumb. <laughs> well, anyways guys, that's it. Uh, that's one of my failures, one of my failed dish. Don't judge me, or judge me all you want. Give me a little pro tips besides getting a deep fry because I couldn't bring my deep fry here. But um, yeah, the vegetable sauce is actually really good, so give that a go. And then teach me how I can make better croquettes. But. Before we do that, before we go away, let's just, oh no, I don't want to do that, that's explosion. That's not that hot actually, it's not that hot. They're good. It's so bad for you. Oh, it's so bad for you. Once again, I'll try my best to make another one, a better one. You know what, I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and put that thumbs up button. Just give me that thumbs up for effort. I'll see you guys next time.